The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Well, hi, everyone. This is David Arendale, your host for the Peer Assisted Learning Groups, or PAL, podcast. In this podcast episode, I'm going to tell you about the revised 2018 annotated bibliography that I maintain. The long title of it is Post-Secondary Peer Cooperative Learning Programs. The reason why I seem to be so fussy with that is that if you look at all the literature, if you did a uh, Google search, as I'll give you a statistic here in a few moments, it's enormous how much that you could be able to find. For me, I'll explain why I have narrowed down to the particular group. A follow-up episode to this podcast is actually going to contain the annotated bibliography. You can download it and you're able to read it and also you could print it. Just a heads up for you, the bibliography now has nearly 520 pages to it. So just to give you a heads up about that, don't want you to be surprised when you hit the here the print button and then you run out of paper. Well, as part of my scholarly and personal research interest, I maintain this annotated bibliography. While I've posted it online in the past, I'm also making it available in multiple formats, PDF, Word, EndNote database, and such. So all of that will end up being available for you. You'll find the address on the front page of the annotated bibliography, which is going to be in the next episode then. In recent years, the availability of the literature in this field is exponentially increased. Now, all depending on which search words you use, collaborative learning, peer learning, and such, you'll find anywhere between 16 and 42 million online records. If you use Google Scholar, well, it reduces it down, but it's still at about 2 million. This annotated bibliography doesn't try to address everything that's out there. I have narrowed it down to national programs that exist inside the United States, also inside of other countries. Australia, South Africa, Sweden, the United Kingdom, and other places then. There's several criteria that I follow in order to determine, well, who goes into this? Number one, the program must have been implemented at the tertiary or the college level. Number two, the program has a real clear set of systematic procedures in order to do it. We need to know how to be able to implement something that we've read about. Number three, program evaluation studies have been conducted and are available for review. Probably at least two-thirds of all of the entries in this annotated bibliography, bibliography are research studies themselves. Another thing is that these programs have to also embed inside of them systematically talking about and modeling study strategies. That's the reason why these are a subset of all the other peer learning groups that might be out there. Sometimes you call them learning communities. Well, in terms here, these are all about helping students to be able to earn higher grades. So that's another thing that I think is important. And program outcomes must have increased um, the following. Increased content knowledge, higher final course grades, higher pass rates, higher persistence rates. And then the last item is the program has been replicated at other institutions. So that's the reason why I have narrowed it all down to about a half a dozen programs. And I think that it helps me in my own research to be able to know more about less things rather than trying to be an expert in everything. So what are the programs that are going to appear inside this bibliography? Well, Accelerated Learning Groups, Emerging Scholars Program, Peer-Led Team Learning, Peer-Assisted Learning, Structured Learning Assistance, Supplemental Instruction, and Video-Based Supplemental Instruction. They all share the same elements that I just talked about earlier on. They had to have those. 
For me, my basic background was that I learned an awful lot about supplemental instruction and worked at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where I helped other people, not only in the U.S., but in other countries, to implement and to adapt SI for particular needs at institutions or inside of different countries then. Nearly 25% of all of the entries inside of this bibliography are by programs outside the United States. There's really exciting things going on with peer learning groups in other countries. South Africa, they also add in an element for multicultural interactions and sensitivity since they're trying to find ways to overcome the terrible period of apartheid and the death and the destruction that occurred because of that, well, they're actually using this not only to help students to get better grades in difficult courses, they're also getting students who would, might never sit down next to each other to actually have a conversation. Inside of England, they use uh, peer learning programs as a way to get a student volunteer to help facilitate those sessions. And the thing that's interesting is they all volunteer to participate in them. It's really quite fascinating to see why um, they see it as a great way for them to learn twice and also for them to start practicing some of their own skills that might lead them to a teaching career then. So once again, there's lots of reasons why people have implemented all of these different programs. So once again, Please take a look at the bibliography, which is going to be the next episode. Yeah, that's one of the things that's really pretty cool about podcasting, I think, is that it's not just simply uh, audio that can be podcast, but also documents can. So watch for that um, as I continue the podcast episodes in the near future for more resources. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop at this point and let you... Uh, download the annotated bibliography, and start to enjoy it. Future episodes are going to be me talking about some of the most recent research on peer learning programs from 2017 and 2018, and also I'm going to share about my own research interests. I have a number of things that I am working on with several other colleagues. So thank you for tuning in for this podcast, and I'll end up visiting with you on the next episode.